Also, can you briefly describe your key characters and their roles? I would say, uh, since Demonte's here, of, of course, uh, Tyree. Um, he's the one that's going through the most emotion. He's been friends with uh, Kenny for about 13 years, and you know he doesn't want to lose his best friend. And I feel like you know everybody who has had a best friend or even you know a best friend that they've lost, you know, can relate to it. So that's why I wrote it. And as far as gearheads, I would say. You know, the, the main character, uh, Jericho, could probably be the one that I would say is the key element in the movie. You know, he's coming out of retirement, you know, as a street racer, and, you know, he sees himself falling in love with uh, his rival's ex, but also, you know, being sucked back into the world that he wanted to leave out because his mentor passed. So he sees himself not only growing as a, uh, as a man, but also facing different trials and tribulations in the process. What is guerrilla filmmaking? Is it a 21st century term? Guerrilla filmmaking is basically, being an independent filmmaker, there are a lot of uh, things that you have to go through, you know, from not really having a budget to you know, being able, not being able to do certain things that you want to do. So basically it's taking your camera and, you know, taking that chance and filming where, you know, to get that, to get the scene that you have to get. You know, it's um, going to places like we shot at the Riverwalk and there's certain places on the Riverwalk where you cannot shoot. So we had to find a place f sort of further away from the Riverwalk where there's not a lot of people to get the scene. You know, it's going to people, you know, I was, uh, had the opportunity to talk with a few people in certain places like Bob's Classic Kicks. I just went in there and I just asked them like, hey, I'm shooting this movie and I would love to film in your establishment. And they were all for it as long as, you know, we weren't doing anything reckless or, you know, that would damage the place. I told him about the film and he was, very adamant about having me come in there and, you know, film in there. And he even gave a couple of pointers while we were there, you know, to enhance the scene that actually really worked. What was the greatest strength Thanks, and or weakness that you contributed to for the way things turned out with happened? the movies? Strength, I would say um, the love that the city, like, gave us. Because how Chris was talking about uh, guerrilla filmmaking, um, it is what we had to do and a lot of the places that we went people were just like very open to uh allowing us to do what we need to do like um um at bob's classic kicks uh pops he had um you know said no problem do what you need to do just uh make sure that it's good and um uh for one scene we had to go to checkers to buy some fries and um the manager just comes outside and he's and we were like debating why we were out there like um we don't know if we should go inside. Maybe we should just stay outside and have them bring the fries. And the managers come out like, no, go in. Make sure you get everything you need. You want extra fries? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I have no problem with you guys doing whatever. And the city honestly showed so much love to us, allowing us to do what we love and uh, live out our passion. So I would say that that was definitely one of the greatest strengths of making this film. The weakness, I would say, for uh, Gearheads was the, uh, the time frame. Um, I wanted to do so much more with uh, Gearheads. I wanted it to be a little bit longer, but as far as time consumed, because it was my final film, you know, before I graduated, so I had to get it done ASAP. I was able to, you know, work with what I had to get, you know, um, an amazing film. Um, and it turned out great. Uh, as far as with homies, I would say the weakness was, um, Probably, you know, the, uh, man, <laughs> the money situation will probably be it. Um, I didn't have, I didn't have the money to pay, you know, DeMonte or Dwayne or any of the people that worked on the film, but I made sure that they ate, <laughs> you know, 
I, I I made sure that every, after every t uh, after every scene we would shoot, you know, we would go get some food, whether it was from Coney or you know starters. I made sure that they you know were well taken care of. That's one of the things that I was taught, you know, back in high school when I was working with uh, you know Hamisi and Dennis Moore and uh, Dana Hughes was, if you can't pay, you know, the people that you work with, at least feed them. You know, at least let them know that they're appreciated and you know, they'll come back and want to work with you, work with you again. What have you learned that others might not know about this experience? You're going to hear a lot of things. Uh, you're going to hear like a lot of things. And um, some are going to be great. Some are going to be true. Some are going to sound great and, you know, they fall through. Uh, and some are just like you hear one thing and then you hear nothing else. Like, and it's going to after a while, you're probably going to get used to it. I've been doing this for a little while, this uh, acting, and I hope to get into filmmaking, such as Chris right here. But um, over, I want to say, five years now I've been um, acting, I've heard so many things, so many promises, and um, some have been true. Some have uh, been a great experience, such as Chris right here, and some has um been not so true, not so great, a little disappointing and all. And um it, it it'll mold you. It'll definitely mold you. It'll build up your character and after a while it make you strive to work harder. In this field you're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna try to deter you or kind of try to conform you into this, you know, this exact copy of what everyone else is doing. I've kind of tried to stay away from that and, you know, build my own character. You know, I, my, my way of filmmaking, I feel, is my own personal way of filmmaking. It's not like anyone else's, you know. I want to uh, showcase the city in more of a positive light, even though some of the subject matter may be a little, you know, harsh. I do want to, you know, showcase my city in more of a positive light, especially right now. You know, with everything that's going on, I feel like as my it's my duty as a filmmaker to, you know, make films that will, you know, ch you know, challenge you mentally, and you know, showcase that knowledge is power and anything is possible. You know, look at me. I'm I've been doing film for about ten years, and I've had my days where I wanted to give up and do something else, maybe go into teaching. I still want to go into teaching. But, you know, when I started, you know, taking it seriously, like really seriously when I got into, you know, high school and to be able to work with people like DeMonte, Dwayne Smith, uh, Brad Watts, Travis, and to see the looks on their faces when they saw the finished product and to see the look on my face and the audience is, you know, it shows that I'm actually doing something right. You know, and there's people that, you know, out here that, of course, will try to, you know, find the faults in it. You know, the fact that I'm not paying people, the fact that I'm a guerrilla filmmaker. But to be able to, you know, have the opportunity to come back to my old high school and say, hey, I was able to debut two films in here and to wow the audiences, I feel like my job as a filmmaker has, is complete. I'm all about positivity and uh, you know, networking, and I had the opportunity to talk with uh, a bunch of DSA alums who do music. You know, uh, a lot of them I've used uh, in some of my movies, and a lot of them, I've, I'm actually in the process of trying to use them in some of my pre, um, upcoming projects. But it's just a bunch of DSA alums coming together, you know, jamming out from, you have a wide variety of music from hip hop to jazz to neo soul to pop. You know, we even have a uh, tribute that we're putting together for a DSA alum, Aaliyah. We're gonna have a, um, a dance group come together and to do a tribute to her. So it's just a bunch of people just coming together who uh, all believe in the project and all believe in me as an artist and as a filmmaker, just coming together just to give back to their school. The premiere is November 14th.
7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. at 123 Selden. Right there in the Ford Auditorium.